Ramsey Network, this is The Ramsey Show, where we help you get control of your money, get ahead in your career, and get on the path to living well. I'm George Campbell, your host, joined today by Rachel Cruz, number one best-selling author, host of The Rachel Cruz Show, a mother, a daughter, a friend to all. all That's her. <laughs> we are excited to take your call, so give us one, 888 5225 Let us help you take the right next step. Maybe you're at a crossroads, you need some inspiration, some motivation, uh, you're stressed out about inflation, we can help. We can help. We're, gonna, we're blessed to be a blessing. So let's do that this hour, 888 825 Jordan kicks us off in St. Louis, Missouri. Jordan, welcome to the show. I don't have the show here. Let me flip back. There we go. Jordan, are you with us? Yes. Yes. Thank you for taking my call. Yes. How can Rachel and I help? Hey, just wondering if you guys had any tips on staying forward thinking in terms of saving and doing everything, you know, the way I should do it, but also being able to be present and enjoy the moment. Interesting. So what's the question? What's the pain point there? Are you you're budgeting right now currently and you feel like you're not able to enjoy it? Well, not necessarily. It's just I feel like. You know, saving and everything is much more geared towards the future. Um, but I don't want to stay. I want to be able to enjoy the moment um, and enjoy the present, but also be able to um, secure the future. So that can be reflected in your budget. Do you have things in your budget that involve spending and vacations and buying things that you want to buy? So I think it's more of just a general mindset thing than like budget specific. So it's yeah. like, it's, it's, it's hard for me to shift gears from like future, future, future to enjoy the present. Yeah. And I think that there's a time and a place for all that, that thinking and, and dreaming. I mean, I, I'm probably more like you, Jordan. I probably enjoy the present easier than I do thinking about the future. So I just know with my personality, then I'm like, okay, I have to set time to make sure that I'm looking at future goals, but I don't do that every day. I mean, Winston and I, my husband and I will, you know, we have, we call it dream, uh, dream dinners. I don't know how cheesy that is. I like it. Might, That's might nice. be a little cheesy, but we'll just go to dinner and be like, Hey, if money wasn't an option, what would we do? And like some dinners, we like take the conversation down to what if we would lived in Montana on a ranch and we're like off the grid, like it's that to buying a new car. I mean, whatever it is, but it's like, you just let yourself dream. And then out of that, you really see, okay, where do I want my future to go? And then, yeah, then you kind of set money aside to get there and to hit that goal. But, but I'm not sitting there every day thinking, Oh, what am I going to be when I'm 50? Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I feel like I do enjoy the moment while having goals for the future. Uh, but I think there's a level of probably contentment, Jordan, too, of the present of just being excited and happy where you are. Um, and then when the time comes that you carve out specific intentional time to really think about the future, then you're able to be in that mindset. But I think you can turn that mindset off and you don't have to live in that in a daily basis. Does that make sense? Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's great advice. I, I do think I kind of get stuck in that mindset sometimes and it produces a lot of anxiety. So I appreciate that. What helped me, Jordan, was having a good, healthy mix of short-term and long-term goals. So an example, me and my wife, we want to go to Europe later this year. That's a short-term goal we want to save up for. We also know we want to save up to buy an upgrade in house later down the road. That could be a few years from now. But we also have things that are happening this weekend that are in the budget that we're saving up for. And so I think having that mix makes you feel like I'm not just thinking about the future. Yeah, and it helps when you're doing the thing for the weekend that you're present in the moment in the weekend. And you're like, hey, we planned on going out to a nice dinner with friends. So when you're enjoying your nice dinner... You actually enjoy the dinner and thinking about the moment. You're not thinking, oh, gosh, I got to fund my 401k to make sure I have this amount of money. You know what I mean? Don't let yourself go there. Because I do think, Jordan, to your point, that can be unhealthy. And it steals the joy of the moment that you're in if you're constantly just thinking about the future and the past. Like, I know people that live in the past. Oh, yeah. And it's either the regret or the, oh, those were great years if we could just go. Right. And there's a time and a place to go back. But I think that there's a healthy mentality to be in the present and to enjoy it. So I think you're on the right track, Jordan. Um, I think it's a great question. Are you married, Jordan? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm single. I'm 28 years old. Okay. What I would do if I'm if I'm in your shoes, I'm going to find some friends that I think are wise and that I want to hang out with and go kind of dream a little bit with them and use them as accountability and use them as kind of that bounce bouncing launch pad to go hey let's have some fun i want to budget for some things in the short term i want to budget for some things in the long term maybe they'll give you some ideas of what that could look like 
Yeah. All right. I hope that helps. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah, appreciate the call, man. You know, it'd be an interesting... I'm just doing this on the fly. If it works, it works. It's Friday. It's all live. Okay. If, if you, there are single people out there, call in because I do want to have a discussion about this quote unquote like accountability partner. So Ooh. I say that because we talk about that a lot at Ramsey. If and you're I, not married. And I kind of hate that word. Can I say that too? Yeah. Accountability feels <sighs> icky. I don't know. I agree. It feels like old youth group of, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so find a friend that you like. And the idea, and the reason we say this is because you don't need to do life alone. And when you're single, you know, every, isolating. all of your decisions are up to you. Everything from buying groceries to making sure the oil's fixed in the car. If you have a car that has oil, fellow Tesla owner there. Wow. Right just, there. Yeah. Right there. Uh-huh. Don't leave me hanging. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is like, you're not, <laughs> sorry, George, the, the, Decision making, you're, you're making it in a vacuum in so many areas of life. So having a person that walks beside you um, to bounce, those, especially those big decisions with, yeah. is really important. When you're starting out budgeting, having someone that's wise with money to be like, hey, I just want you to look at this and make sure I'm not missing anything crazy. And it's a very organic, natural conversation. I feel like sometimes it can sound so you robotic. You don't walk up to someone and go, will you be my accountability partner? <laughs> and you see my budget every single month? Can we meet on the 15th at 3 o'clock so oh, you gosh. can see don't my do that. budget? But, but I do. If you're single out there and you have this person in your life and it's working well, I want you to call in because I want to talk about it. Yes. I think there's a really great way to do it um that is very helpful and is possible but it's not um overly form you know that it's not just like awkward or something wow well there it is Is rachel just opened up a singles theme hour so give us a call triple eight eight two five five two two five let's talk about this is good because too i'm gonna keep adding on here because i got married young so winston has all i mean I've, i've had a husband for a the whole, basically my whole adult life. Yeah. So I, when I talk about it, I know friends that have done it and, you know, and I have a friend and she's great at having someone in her corner. Um, but I always like to hear real life, how this works for people day in and day out and what it really looks like tactically. So, but for you, did you ever have a good friend that that was that before? Oh you yeah. And Cause there's, there's friends that have been mentors to me that I look up to a lot and of did people you that really show here. them your budget. Yeah. We talked to, you know, the ins yes. and outs of money, especially in a place like this at Ramsey. We, I know. It's very it's normal so for easy. us to talk about money. And so it's, it's <laughs> yes. fun. It's almost fun. It's like a sport to us. <laughs> like, what, what's in your budget this month? How are you saving up for that? How'd you do that? You know, we kind of, it's like inside baseball here at Ramsey. But it is true. When you get outside of the Ramsey bubble, you're like, oh, people don't talk about money. Right, right. It's unless they're making fun of how, you know, screwed they are with their student loans and, sure. you know, car payments. Yeah. So give us a call, 888 5225 whether you're single or not. But Rachel wants to talk to the single folks. <laughs> So give us a call. We'll be back with you. This is The Ramsey Show. Life is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, Ramsey personality and host of the Fine Print Podcast. Joined today by Rachel Cruz, and we are taking your calls. The number is 888-825-5225. Rachel and I just got back from Orlando with the gang, Dave, Ken, John Deloney. We were all out there doing a Building Wealth live event in Orlando, and it was amazing. We had, what, 3,000 people there? Yeah, it was they amazing. They were pumped up, ready to go. And uh, really the takeaway from this event is – it is still possible to build wealth in 2022. It's possible, and we're going to show you how to do it in a wise way because there's a lot of um, messages out there and tactics and ways to do it that sound really shiny and exciting and fun and easy, and we kind of debunk a lot of that, sadly. Because there's a lot of myths out there. There's a lot of myths. that end up, It sounds good in the short term. Well, and if you and watch then- the news, you're like, well, there's no way, Rachel. The recession is here. I mean, oh, yeah. inflation just keeps going. The housing market, the car market, nobody can build wealth. We can't even survive. Yes. And it is a difficult time right now. So saying, okay, what are these issues? And we talk about that at a round table, all of us, um, and kind of dive into, hey, here are the things going on. Here are the ways to combat it. And here's the right way and the smart and wise way over time to win with money and build wealth. So yeah, it's been a, it's been such a fun event. We did Vegas two weeks ago, Orlando last night, and we hit the road for the fall. Yes. So uh, thank you, Orlando, for coming out. You guys were amazing. People drove, flew from all over the country to be there. We were signing books, taking photos till the wee hours of the night, loved hearing their stories, talking with Financial Peace University coordinators, pastors from the area. It was incredible. So our spring tour is wrapped up, but we are not done yet. Building Wealth Live is coming to a few cities across the country this fall, and we want everyone to hear how to build wealth the right way. So if you are near these areas or can make it to these areas, we'd love to see you. Phoenix, September 13th, Sacramento on November 1st, Minneapolis on November 10th, and San Antonio on November 15th. Tickets start at just 25 bucks, or you can get a four-pack of tickets starting at just $60. So bring your friends. It's going to be amazing. RamseySolutions.com slash events is the place to go to get your tickets. All right, Rachel. So, you know, we like to we like to browse social media every now and then. And I got this video from a friend the other day that was fascinating. And it's all about the newer generations, the younger generations, Gen Z and the relationship to cash. Now, we say cash is king around here, but there's a new slogan for Gen Z. Cash is free. (laughs) I can't wait. I know it sounds like an oxymoron. So we're going to play the video and uh, we'll get your reaction. Okay. The other day I was out and I made a purchase at a store and the Gen Z person who was checking me out said that'll be 18 something. And I pulled out of my purse a 20 and I gave her the 20 and I said, I just have cash. And she said, oh wow, that's like it's, then it's like free. And I said, oh, what do you mean? And she said, well, if you pay with cash, it's free. And I said, I don't know what you mean. (laughs) And she said, well, like if you have a $5 bill and you buy a coffee for four ninety eight. it's like a free coffee. It's like, it doesn't count cash. It doesn't count. It's not real money. And I was very, so I came home and both of my kids are Gen Z and I asked them both, what was she talking about? And my daughter who is 18 said, yeah, cash doesn't count. If you have cash, it doesn't count. It's not like it's real money. The real money is what's in your debit, on your debit card. Is this true? Is this true? I love this. Love her energy there. She's just as confused as all of us. That is so funny. It okay. raises an interesting question. Okay. So here's my yeah, here are my, your my, my like knee jerk reaction. So when we say around here cash is king, yes, actual cash um is part of that. But I also under that say like but your it's your money. Like part of that is meaning you have the money to pay for something. So whether that's money in a bank account or that is money you tangibly have in your hand, the idea is, yes, debt is dumb. Cash is king. Cash is your money. That, money. Yes. And, but studies, have, a layer deeper, studies have shown that you spend 12 to 18% less when you spend actual cash. You feel the pain. Because you feel the pain of, go of, of your own money um, versus a debit card, I think is a little bit different, but versus a credit card where you have no emotional attachment because you know, I'm just going to pay it, you know, I'm going to try to pay it at the end of the month and there's time and I'm fine. You know, there's just no big emotion there. So all that to be said, um, I like that they at least said (laughs) that what's in your checking account is what counts. And I'm like, is it because you can track it? Like if you, 
you know, if I swipe my debit card, I have to track that transaction for me in every dollar. Or if you go on your online bank statement, you see it, it shows up, even though it's already been paid. Yeah. It's there. So I guess their feeling is once it's gone, it's gone and it's not tra- traceable anymore and it feels well, freer this than generation, it like This generation, they grew up in a digital world. For sure. For sure. Yes. They're Especially not used when it to comes actually to money. having cash. I thought she was going to, I thought it, the TikTok was going to go to that the, she didn't know how to make change or something because she had never seen cash. Like, I thought oh, that's where I was going. But it's funny that, that, could it, also that it be didn't true. even feel, you know, it didn't even feel real. And okay, I, yeah, there's a part of me that I, I kind of, small part, I get it. Yeah. I had some cash. Um, I don't even know what it was from, but it was in my purse. And I went, is Shalotsky's, is that like a national chain? Yeah. Sandwich chain? <laughs> Shalotsky's. Shalotsky's, it's so good. So I went through and I and I paid ten dollars. You know, it was like it was it was like nine whatever. And I paid ten dollars. I was like, okay, I won't have to track that in my every dollar app. Like, it's not going to show up on my bank sale. Like, they're Rachel's kind of, admitting they're, it felt free. It there's felt a, there's free. a small because I, I that because that money in my purse was not saying oh this is my ca- this is my food envelope. Like I didn't have an intentionality if it's outside of a for that ten dollar bill. Envelope. I don't even know where it came from really. Yeah, does that make sense? Like, yeah. so it did kind of feed. I I get the feeling even though it's really funny to say out loud i love that it sounded like you were buying something on the dark web and you were just buying a sandwich at schlossky's <laughs> like, is that what i said, <laughs> is that how I set uh, it up like, i haven't even heard that <laughs> restaurant name since like 1994 Shlotsky's? i love that rachel's still holding it oh and number one without black olives all day okay. rachel's keeping it alive what do you okay. think what do you think yeah George? my take is this i don't think gen z has any real reason to handle cash and so when they do get it it's usually a gift from a relative that's right. It's from a birthday. It's from Christmas. You know, their paychecks are direct deposited and then they use their card and they never have to physically touch cash. And when yeah. they do have it, they go, well, that was from a gift. And so it didn't really feel like it's yes. bonus money. Yes. So I can use this more frivolously. That's fair. And That's then, how I see it. Okay. I'm going to keep going because I'm like, but then on the other side, all the cash stuffing went nuts like last month. Yes. Where they were actually cashing out their paychecks and doing the envelope system they call it cash stuffing stuffing this folder it's a new trend that's been around yeah since like the so beginning like, of so time so some of them are embracing this cash life and love it because they realize how responsible you can be with it where on the other opposite end it doesn't even feel like money to them yeah well and when you see cash now it's like whoa that's a lot of money because you don't yes. see money anymore i know and so it's, it's an interesting uh you know conversation how do and you feel if, if you were just if ten dollars just showed up in your wallet and you can't remember how it got there? I see it as bonus money. And you money. went to Shalotsky's and got not a number one. Do that. <laughs> got a number one without black olives. How would that would you feel like? It would feel a little bit like bonus money. Yeah. I wouldn't feel like obligated to go deposit that in my bank account and then budget for that. I would go, okay, sweet. I got ten bucks from sure, wherever. Sure. Sure. Uh, so so here's my thing. If that's you and you feel that way and you want to get control of your money. Go deposit it into your bank account. You can do that at ATMs. I yeah. know they're like, what do I even do with cash? You, you can put it into the bank. That's amazing. But if you do that, then it's on your debit card and you can budget for it You know, with every dollar and all that. And even with every dollar, there's simple ways. You can still budget $200 for groceries mm-hmm. and then cash that out into an envelope and actually spend that cash and track it. Yes, yes. So it's still possible. You don't yeah. get an excuse to not budget because you use cash. Absolutely. Yes. And the intentionality. And actually, it is very helpful when you're intentional with cash and you do something like the envelope system. It does help because you physically you see, OK, I only have this much money left and out to eat or the you know, what I mean, it, it has a purpose. Yes. Um, you know, you know, I'm a frugal guy, Rachel. So the, here's where I use guy. cash every two weeks. I get my hair cut and no. my barber has a five dollar discount if you pay with no, cash and you do it. And I do the cash discount. <gasps> so I always need to have cash on hand. How much, you pay, how much you pay? How much you pay? you? Will, I'll tell. I'll tell America how much I pay. It's thirty-five dollars for. Wow, a that's really good, George. Thank I thought you. you were going to be way more bougier than that. No, and I'm frugal. You know me, Rachel. I'm always I trying know. to get a deal. The hair is great. And I tip. I tip. Okay, make sure you tip your barbers. Okay. For sure. So there we go. Cash is still king, even in 2022. Gen Z, you hear me? It's not free money. Budget for it. Get control of it. This is the Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. 
That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined today by Rachel Cruz. We're taking your calls, 888-825-5225. Adam joins us up next in Greenville, South Carolina. Adam, welcome to the show. Hey, George and Rachel. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. How can we help? Well, um, I've got a car problem I'm hoping maybe you guys could help me make a decision on. I have a very old um, Toyota Camry. That is, uh, this was this was my baby step two and three car. Nice. And um, mechanically, I mean, I mean, this car is old enough to be registered as a classic car. That's how old it is. What year is uh, it? It is 1997. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, mechanically, it is still dependable. Like it, you know, it runs fine, but the suspension is pretty much shot. And to get that fixed is probably going to cost just about what the car is worth. And I'm trying to decide if it'd be better, because like right now, you know the used car market's insane. Um, so in, if I could potentially upgrade to something for just a few thousand more, you know, of, of what I've got in my emergency fund, would that be a good idea? So are you in baby step four now? Do you have a fully funded emergency fund and you're out of debt? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Have you been saving for an upgrade in car I started. I mean, I, I just, I should preface, I, I just hit baby step four, like, in February, okay. March. Okay, so this uh, is newer. So, I'm, this is, this, yeah, this is recent. Well, I would continue saving. I th- I think at this point, you upgrade the car, man. You're not in debt. There's no reason to be driving around a 25-year-old car at this point. Mm-hmm. I want you to get a different kind of Dave car, which is your upgrade. Now that you're out of debt, you've worked hard to do that and build the emergency fund. So, I would save up for a used car paying cash. It doesn't need to be crazy, but it needs to be better than the 97 Camry with the shot suspension. So how much can you sell it for when it's not like just as is? I could probably get about 2000 for it, maybe. Okay. Oh, that and is if, impressive. And if you fixed it, how much did you, how much do you say the repairs were? Uh, about $2,000. About 2000 <laughs> oh, yeah, That's right. About what, what it's worth. And then how much could you sell it for if it was fixed? I, I really don't know if fixing it would, it would up the, uh, the value of it very much. Because Maybe of just like 3, what? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's just an old car. You know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So Adam, I would sell as is. You know, get the two thousand, put some money um, that you need, it, and it's drivable, right? I'm trying to think of how urgent this is for you. Like, is it? Yeah, yeah. It, it's drivable, and it's still a you know, it's a safe car. It's just, I'm just, I'm just like I said, I'm just been going back and forth on well, should I just drive it till the wheels fall off or? Should yeah, I, you're getting, cl- you're getting you know, close to that, Adam, for sure. So, yeah, yeah I would. I yeah, so I think you've done a great job. Um, and I think, yeah, this is the point where you're able to upgrade. And I think that that's awesome. So selling it for 2 k whatever money you have saved over the next couple of months. And, and the fact that you don't, you know, your emergency fund and everything is funded, I wouldn't touch that. So I would just save on the side, uh, put mm-hmm. a couple more grand together, and you could step up significantly oh, yeah. to a, se- a seven, $8,000 car is going to feel a whole lot different than what you're driving right now. Even. You're probably looking at, you know, yeah, a 2010 sure, uh, simple sedan. I think that would do the trick, and it would feel like a giant upgrade from what you're driving now. But that's our, yeah, lo- like the logic car. on it is will you recoup what you put into it? And so if it's right. worth two grand and you put two grand in, well, it's got to be worth four grand or more to, to be even it. worth it. Otherwise, right. just sell it as is and save up cash and upgrade. Okay. 
All awesome. Right. Well, Thanks, that was my Adam. Question. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, for sure. man. Thanks for the call. And I think that that's the that's the stepping up in car where you start to you drive like no one else. So later you can drive like no one yes. else. And so you know he saves up you know, a couple grand and he steps up to an $8,000 car. He drives that for maybe a year as he saves on the side. And that's the great thing about cars. They're not forever. Yes. So you could There's always sell another it again one if there. you wanted and put the money you saved and keep just stepping up. And so that's the power in doing it with cash as you do it slowly. But it doesn't mean you can never have a great car. Yes. People think, well, the Ramsey plan is you drive crappy cars your whole life. Mm-mm. You look in our parking lot. There's a, there's some real nice cars there out there, nice and cars. there's some beater cars out there That's because right. people are all over their money journey. So, Adam, you've done the work to get out of debt. So I I just want you to upgrade because I want that for you. You deserve it at this point. You've done the hard work. Thank you so much. Tracy joins us up next in Grand Rapids. Tracy, welcome to the show. Hi, longtime listener. Um, I have a a unique question for you. I'm 56 years old. I uh, just was recently divorced the last mm. eight months. I'm sorry. Um, I started a home-based business in my kitchen, um, ex- uh, grew, and uh, moved into a, a location, and I made it through COVID. Um, the business is a little over 12 years old, um, and I'm broke. I'm not business broke if my business were to close and not, I own nothing, you know, I owe nothing on the business itself. I'm also, um, my home is paid for. I have a work car and a pleasure car, both paid for, but I am broke. So you have no debt, but you also have no savings. I have nothing. After the divorce, I have, I mean, I, I shouldn't say I have nothing. I have no money. The business has a small cushion, um, but I have nothing. Okay. How much do you make a year, Tracy, in your business? I've always just put my business, I put the money back into the mm. business. Well, it's, I'm a wedding and events florist, and it's an ever-changing industry, and you are ever keeping up with the changes. So the money just went back into the business. How are you eating, though? Like, how are you, how are you paying your bills? Well, I do make draws. So, um, you know, so what would you say is your net income per month uh, or what you take out to pay your bills monthly, probably less than a thousand. Okay. So Tracy, because of your age and where you're at, like I understand putting money back in the business, but you also have to watch out for yourself. Do you think the business is ever going to get to a point where you can sell it? I, you know, it's, it's the type of business that, um, no, I don't believe I could sell it. You kind of own uh, a job. Yeah, yeah, I, um, there's, uh, mom and pop florists just, just hardly exist anymore. Sure, So I, sure. I believe that it would not be a sellable business. Okay. Um, so Tracy, what I want you to do though is, um, map out what the next 20 years of your life looks like. So that's everything from when you want to retire, if you want to, maybe you're one of those people that just loves to work. Uh, but you want to start to have these savings goals to put away right. money, right? So you're, you know, I want you to, to take these, take advantage of these retirement vehicles with investing like a Roth IRA. And I want you to really push into that because you want to have money saved for the future. Cause there's one day that you're not going to want to work and you're going to want to retire. I don't know if that's in 10 years or 20 years, yeah, right. but you need to sit down and really understand that. And I would sit down with a smart investor pro and map this out because they're going to help put you in funds because you need to start, you need to start investing and you're, you're still relatively young. I mean, you're 56. So, you know, you're, you still have decades ahead of you. Um, but to figure out what's the smartest way to go about this, to get you the most money as possible. But that's also going to require you to take money out of the business and pay yourself, um, what you're able to, so that you have a future. Yeah. And Tracy, I want you to ask yourself a hard question. Is the business worth it? Because right now you're making $10,000 a year. (laughs) Busting your butt in this business. Could you go work for another florist and make more than that? Yeah, um, that that would be hard to do. I'm sure I I could do that. I know this is your baby. I'm sorry. This is your baby, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, survived COVID. I started um, this, you know, in my kitchen, and it's a beautiful business, and it's yeah. And I do want to retire. Yeah. And that's where I think you have the hard. The hard conversation, whether that's with a friend, uh, where you go, all right, I need to find maybe a a different career path right now. And maybe this becomes my hobby passion project on the weekends that I do. (laughs) But right now, you need a way to make way more income than $1,000 if you ever plan on retiring. Yeah. 
Do you think you have more in the business? Because when you say that you're just putting everything back in the business, is there money available? Like, are you making more and you're just being overly cautious to keep this business afloat? Like, could you be paying yourself more or is that about what you're taking? Yeah, I absolutely, sh- I, I absolutely could. I want you to look at the books of your business and stuff before you do that, because jo- what George is saying is right, though. You may, that, it may come to that crossroads where you realize, wow, because of my age and everything that's going on, circumstantial, I need to put more money away. And maybe the business allows you to do that, and you just have to let go of that control to do that, or there might be a different path. But I'm sorry, Tracy, you've been through a lot. A lot the last 12 months, so um, we're thinking about you for sure. You, you're definitely, you've got the perseverance down, that's for sure, and that will get you a long way. Rooting for you. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined today by Rachel Cruz, and we are taking your calls. Your career, your relationships, your money, it all happens right here on The Ramsey Show. Brennan joins us up next in Virginia. Brennan, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. How can Uh, we help? Yeah, I just wanted to touch base with you guys, and, you know, I'm 27. Um, I have a home. Um, I still have college debt. I have um, a car loan, and I have investments in crypto, um, and really just want to navigate. I have forty thousand dollars saved um, in my in my savings, and I just want to talk to you guys and see what is the next, you know, best path forward, um, you know, for financial freedom. Yeah, it's a great question. How much uh, student loan debt do you have left? I only have thirty-four thousand. Thirty-four, and how much is the car? payment. Or, sorry, the car loan. 16000 15 Okay. And you said you have a home. You have a mortgage? Yes, sir. Okay. But I got a sweet deal on that. So the home is valued at 420000 I only owe 200000 Okay. And how much do you have in crypto? 14000 Okay. Well, you did great saving up. I mean... You have a you have a great savings account starting out. Um, so overall, here here's the way we we kind of take our stance, Brendan. So we want you to be on the path of the fastest possible way to have financial peace and to build wealth. And so what we have found over decades is that fastest path is being completely debt free. Because your largest wealth building tool is your income. And when your income comes in and it's not going back out to student loans and a car payment, you have more money to go and invest in things that have long track records. And so getting to that right. point is really where we, where we would suggest you go. So what does that mean? That means if I'm in your if I woke up in your shoes, um, and George, you can answer this question if anything's different. But for me, if I woke up in Rachel's heels, what would I do? <laughs> what would you do? Uh, I I would get out of the crypto. I'd, I'd sell it, cash it out, get your fourteen thousand because then you're going to have fifty four thousand uh, dollars in savings, and you're going to be able to knock out all your debt right there. And so, being able to pay off the car, I'd pay that off tomorrow. Um, go ahead and pay off the student loans, and then build up a three to six month worth of expenses um, emergency fund, a fully funded emergency fund. You can put that in a money market account, a savings account, but just having that buffer of cash that if or when something happens, just in case it's there. And then I would start investing 15% of your income into retirement. And when we talk about investing, it really is the things that have proven track records. And so we love mutual funds. If you have uh, a job that offers a 401k and a match doing that, taking, you know, getting into a Roth IRA, um, having these elements that 
involve compound interest. And again, being in the market some, and right now it's on sale because it's down, uh, but really seeing, okay, what are the things that have long track records? And then at that point, if you want to get back into crypto a little bit, I think that's totally fine if it's a small percentage of your world. I just wouldn't have a ton of money in something that does not have a long track record. And crypto could get there, um, but as of right now, I would put myself in a position where I'm debt free and have cash in the bank. How does that hit you, Brendan? Yeah, that, that I kind of knew what you guys were going to say. I just wanted to hear it from you know from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Yeah. Um, he called I've you a horse, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't take offense I've to that. Been, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I meant like the pros, um, but so. I've been talking to my father about it as well, and he, you know, he said something along the lines of doubling up my payments that way. Oh, oh, just so you guys know, I also so um, I make about seventy five thousand dollars a year, and um, and um, so, but I also rent out two of my rooms, so seventy five percent of my mortgage is paid for. Oh, awesome! So. Yeah, and luckily, you know, I have good roommates, um, and I'm not in a committed relationship, thank God. Um, So what the next part is, is do I – what I was really thinking of, do I pay off the car and make double payments on the student loans and then invest into a Roth IRA what what my car payment was? Well, I think you're going to be able to be – if I'm you, you can go ahead and just pay everything off – just and then, about. and then you're going to be investing really soon. And the the time frame between now and when you after you have your fully funded emergency fund, it's not going to be that long. Maybe a couple of months for you because you're already ahead five grand in what you have right now, and you don't have a ton of expenses um, as a single guy. So I, I think you'll be investing really, really soon. Anyways, if I if this was going to take you five years until you start investing, then I would still have the same answer. But I would also be like, oh, I know that doesn't feel great. But I think, Brendan, you're going to be able to start invest. You're going to be able to invest here in the next like five months. I think you would open something up, and that and that time period is not going to make or break you. I would rather you be completely debt free, have no payments, have some cash in the bank, and then you can really start investing at that point. Brendan, what got you here isn't going to get you there. What I'm seeing is you're doing a lot of things right now, all at once. And it's not getting you to where you want to go. And so when I started this plan back in 2013, I had about the similar debt you had. I had $40,000 in debt, student loans, credit cards, and I followed the baby steps. I put $1,000 aside. The rest went towards the debt. I had to cash out some uh, stocks I had from Apple when I worked there as part of their employee stock purchase program. I cashed that. It hurt to cash that out. But man, seeing that debt go away and seeing those payments go away and have that income back in my life. And then I went, oh, I have so much more money to invest now when I don't have any payments. And so the good news is on paper, you could be close to debt free today. If you cashed out the crypto and used all the savings except for $1,000, that would get you almost to debt freedom. And then you save up that three to six months, which with your income and you renting out those rooms, you're going to be able to do in a few months. And then you're going to be able to invest 15%. And then you can start betting on crypto again. So this is not a five-year plan. We're talking within the next six, seven months, you're in a very different place financially. Right. That's All what right. I wanted yeah, to hear. Well, I, That's, he's sold. He is sold. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get off this call voice. and he's going to say, yes, I'm going to do exactly Brennan, what I just, just said. Shoot me straight, Brennan. What's the holdup? I can tell you're not, you're not wanting to do this. Well, the, the, the trade-off is, is that, you know, I know that crypto is very speculative market, and that, and that honestly is an indication of the price fluctuation, and I think we all know that especially people that understand the financial world. It's all right now based on speculation, but there are going to be winners and losers in the space. And if you do your due diligence and you find out what those true winners are that bring real world utility, it's almost, it's almost, you should bet on that because the, the upside to that, it's almost like, well, why not put $14,000 that you can afford to lose? You can't afford it. And you're broke, dude. Okay. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, on paper. I know you're you're here's you the thing. You have $40,000 in savings and you have what is it? 49,000 in in debt. No, that's not right. Right. Here's the thing. I'm hearing language like this. You said multiple times, "Well, I only have 34,000 in student loans. 
Well, I only have 15000 on my car. Well, I only owe 200000 on my house. As long as you see debt in that way, you can't build wealth because you see debt as a tool to be leveraged. And clearly, it's not working. You're doing too many things at once. And I want you to win, man. I'm really rooting for you. And I'm not mad at crypto. Yeah. This is not a thing. I'm not bashing crypto. I don't care what. If it was single right. stocks, I'd tell you to cash it out. Right now, what you need to do is clean up this mess so you can have your greatest wealth building tool back in your life, your income. That's what we're here to do. We're not here to tell you you're doing things wrong. I think it's awesome that you're 27 and you own a house and you clearly know a thing or two. And you're smart. I mean, you're, you have roommates. They're helping pay the more. I mean, yeah, you're, do, you're doing it right. But the problem, too, is, is over time when you just keep sitting in this, you're, it's going to take you longer to build wealth. And again, our plan is to get to the fastest point from point A to point B. How do you do that? And we found time and time again, not just in a math sense too, but also there's an emotional, spiritual sense too, that when you do not owe anyone anything, you have options. And investing in things that have long track records that have been proven over time is the wisest way to get from point A to point B. Preach, Rachel. Preach. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. My thanks to my co-host, Rachel Cruz, all the folks in the booth, and you, America. We appreciate you listening, and we will be back with you before you know it. Hey, it's Rachel Cruz, co-host on The Ramsey Show. If you want to do your debt-free scream live on the show, visit RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream. We'd love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. That's RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. From Ramsey Network, this is The Ramsey Show, where we help you get control of your money, get ahead in your career, and get on the path to living and being well. I'm George Campbell, your host, joined today by my co-host, Rachel Cruz, best-selling author and host of The Rachel Cruz Show. We're taking your calls, 888-825-5225. Let's talk about your money, your career, your work, your life, your relationships, inflation, Teslas. We can talk about it all, <laughs> all right it. here when Dave's not here. <laughs> that's what it's all about. That's what it is. That's, that's the real reason we want to do this show. Just Katie joins what? us up next. She is in Paducah. Kentucky. Katie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. How can Rachel and I help? Um, back in March, I decided to do Financial Peace University, and I'm in baby step two. I'm working my way through it. Awesome. Um, I work full time for the USDA, and I make quilts for people, and I also own two horses and give horseback lessons. Wow. Um, unfortunately, last week, my main horse that I do all my lessons on is injured, and we're taking him to a performance vet here in a couple of weeks to try and figure out what's going on. So my side income of horseback lessons is went from $300 a month to zero, and um, I only make about 34000 a year at the moment, so every single penny counts at the moment. And I'm racking my brain trying to think of new side hustle ideas to make up the difference since my main lesson horse is out. Okay. So what are you making from the quilts every month? Um, it's very inconsistent. It, it ranges from 200 to 350 every other month or so. Every other month. So let's call it 100 bucks a month. Yes. Okay. And you're making 34. Do you think that you could make more elsewhere? Is it time to look for a different job doing the same thing? I started this job back in January. I graduated college in 2021, and I was a veterinary technologist for three years, and I was only making $12 an hour. And then this job with the USDA opened, and so I switched to the USDA, and I jumped from $12 an hour to 17 And so now this is the most salary I've ever made. Um, so I've already hit a big difference, but I'm not opposed to trying to switch jobs to increase 
salary. Okay. I'm just thinking with this job market and how much people are willing to pay, Yeah, um, you could do just what about was the, anything. What were the things you did in that first job you explained? What was it more administra- what, administrative type role? What was that that you were doing for three years? Um, what I was doing for three years? Yes. Okay. I was a veterinary technologist, so I assisted vets. Um, I did treatments on hospitalized patients, uh, help with surgery, place IVs, okay. um, stuff like that. Okay, which is a pretty big skill set. I'm like, that's yeah. that's impressive. So I just wonder, Katie, if there, I mean, I know, I'm sure you have a love for horses um, and a love for what you do, which is awesome. I just wonder if there's a way for you to either take those same passions or something you were doing in your previous job where, you know, maybe animals are still part of your career, but... But right now is the best time to be making money, Katie. I mean, the the job market, it's unbelievable. What people are paying now for labor um, is, is incredible. So for you to replace $300 a month, I don't have any hesitation that you can do that, even by just driving Uber and doing oh, Uber yeah. Eats. I mean, there's so many, so many side hustles like that that you could pick up. And oh, God, in a heartbeat could be making more than $300 uh, a month. But your goal, too, is to, to have a career of something that you're passionate about and that you love. Ken Coleman talks about that a lot here on this show. So I would love for you to find something uh, that maybe is just more full time instead of kind of piecing these things together that gives you more of that consistent lift to be making more money. Uh, unless you find a different way to make more money doing these things. But I'm not I'm sure. I'm just thinking dog sitting, dog walking. Uh, pet sitting, boarding, you can make really good money doing that, Katie, with your love for animals. Have you uh, seen a need for that in your area? Well, I live in a very rural area. Um, I know it said Paducah. I actually live in Murray, Kentucky. I'm about an hour from Paducah, and okay. I live in a town about 30,000. Okay. And um, I, I switched from being a vet tech to working for the government because of the pay raise that I got. Um, and so instead of working 60 hour weeks as a technologist, now I work 40 hours a week, make more money. And then I had extra time to do the lessons and the quilts and with this cost of fuel, I'm scared to like DoorDash or anything, but since I live in such a rural area, I'm not even sure if that would be a possibility or dog walking or dog sitting. Yeah. So how much debt do you have? I have. I started out at one hundred and twenty-five thousand, and I've knocked it down to about one hundred and eighteen so far. Okay. What kind of debt is this? It is student loans, credit card debt, a line of credit, and um, a family loan. Okay. So here's my thing: Are you doing a budget every month currently? Yes. Okay. What I want you to do is stop the bleeding. Obviously, stop going into debt. I'm guessing you haven't gone further into debt during this process. That is correct. Okay, good. I do think we need to up this income. I mean, with this pile of debt you have, this is not going to happen in a year or two unless we up this income to double what it is now. Mm-hmm. And that might yep. mean working 60, 70 hours a week. I don't know that now is the time to, you know, jumping into small business and passion projects right now is the time to do whatever it takes, yeah. work at whatever store is willing to pay you 15, 20 bucks an hour and bust in your tail until this debt's gone. Yeah, Katie, this is this mm-hmm. is the situation of of kind of that urgency of, of getting, it's, it's kind of that mad, we talk about getting mad at your situation and being like, I have $118,000 in debt through all this stuff. And I want this cleaned up as fast as possible. And I will do anything. I will do anything to get this out of my life. And that's going to mean yeah. not doing the, maybe working the jobs that you, yeah, that your heart and your passion is not the thing. I mean, there's some sacrifice here and, he, and now's the time to do it, Katie. You're still young. You just graduated last year from school and this is the time to do it. I'm like, it's not going to get easier. And so put in the hours. I mean, I really want, I want you to go crazy. I want you to go back to 60 hours a week because you picked up 20 more hours somewhere else that you're working. And so really hitting this hard, Katie, and and your mindset has to change. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. And so I, I would just flip my whole mindset upside down and think, okay, it's time to get it's time to get serious and it's time to really do this and be budgeting every single month and every single penny is going towards this debt and you're going to pay off that smallest debt first and then to the second smallest and then so on that's the debt snowball and 
And man, it, it, it has to have this level of intensity in your soul, Katie, to really go after this. Katie, I'm going to give you a hard challenge. Could you sell the horse? Would you do it? I can't. Why not? Um, I've had this horse 11 years. and Katie, Katie, Katie. There's other horses out there. It doesn't even know your name. There's more horses for you on the other side. Listen, I want Katie to win. Oh, my gosh. She's got a mess to clean up. I'm doing whatever it takes. I'll get another horse later. (laughs) This is the Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined today by Rachel Cruz. All right, Rachel, I have to backtrack. Man, that went out like a. That was a. I just hit like the third rail, and I got so much hate from everyone in the booth, everyone in the lobby. No, the lobby. All you had some hands. Well, it was a few bros in the lobby that, you, that are, are yeah. on Team George. Here's what happened. Katie called in, making 34 grand a year. She has 118 thousand dollars in debt. Rural area, not a lot of ways to up the income, and she has two horses. So and one I just horse threw is injured. It out there. One horse is injured, and we're nervous about the vet bills of what that's going to cost. Yes, we'll throw that out there. That we I'll, didn't we didn't touch on that. With that's her. true. And there's another horse that's in perfectly good condition, and I just threw it out there because she's broke, and this is a dire situation. What if you sold the horse? I don't even and know. And you would have thought I said shoot the horse. <laughs> oh, George, oh you would have thought I said that based on the reaction. Oh, Look, please don't email us about go this. For? Does anyone know? I mean, thousands of dollars, I imagine. Like how? Like wait, what is thousands? Like ten thousand? Ten thousand? Okay, our engineer is saying ten grand. I Rachel, mean, come on. If it was a car, can... we'd say sell it. But because it has a soul, if it you're was saying a, you're If it was heartless. a house, well, the only thing that makes me nervous is what these vet bills. She, I don't know if she can afford to have a horse to take care and That's maintain my a point, horse. Rachel. I know, but you made it sound like you said sell the horse to get out of debt. If you can maintain it, how much is your dog, George? <laughs> I'm not broke, Rachel. <laughs> That's the difference. But yeah, so th- the 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 logic though here is if you have something in your life that you cannot financially take care of, um, that is not a person. Let me say that. Sure. Uh, then that's when you start to look and say, okay, when do when does something become more of a curse than a blessing in my life? And that can be a house, that could be a car. You could fill in whatever you want to there. So that was the mindset yes. that you were thinking with this. I was not trying to be insensitive. I love horses. They're wonderful creatures, great pets, but I'm just going, I'm looking around going, what are the options here? Yeah. And it's, and, in a rural and, and there's town. something with pets, y'all. And again, we are pet people. When we just got a puppy, we had a lab for 12 years. Like we are, we love pets. We love dogs, all that. I'm not a horse, bro. I don't know much about horses, but uh, we, I had a call on the show. This was probably months ago with Dave and there was a lady and she, I can't even remember. She had tons of debt. I think it was maybe over a hundred thousand living in an apartment with two dogs. Her apartment, um, rent was insane, but she couldn't move because she had these two dogs. It was like this whole thing. And literally her two, she was sacrificing her life and her financial well being because of these dogs, like these dogs played such this role in her life. Right. And, and again, we love animals. Yes. 
But when something becomes such a barrier um, in your life that you can't make wise decisions going forward, that's when you have to ask yourself hard questions. Thank you. Is that fine? Yes. Thank you but for But when you have 10 seconds left, George, with sweet Katie on the phone. And that you was just my buzzer beater throw right there. it out. A little three point. Sell the horse. Dave says sell the car. George says sell the horse. And then you get on a break. You got Rachel, very every nervous. time I take a call it about found- horses, it goes south. <laughs> the last one, this guy called in and said, hey, should I lease a horse? I don't lease know. Lease a horse? Yes. And so we absolutely <laughs> said, no, don't lease a horse. Save up, pay cash. And then they came at us in the comments going, this guy doesn't understand anything about horse leasing. <laughs> You're right. That was not part of the plan. There's no playbook on horse leasing. And so they're explaining to me that it's more like renting a horse. Well, then why not call it rent a horse <laughs> instead of leasing a horse? Leasing has 100% a very specific... chance you've gotten canceled in the horse culture. Yes. Horse culture has canceled Hor- me. Don't cancel me. Don't horse email culture. Ramsey Care about I... this. Black Beauty is like my favorite movie. So oh, you guys are don't... kind of beating a dead horse here. Time to move on. Beating a dead horse. Thank right. you, James. All right, just go to Justin in Texas. Justin, go. Justin's in Victoria, Texas, and I pray to God he does not own a horse. Uh, Justin, are you with us? Justin, do you have a horse? I think I messed it up. There we go. Is Justin with us? Justin, do you own, do you own a horse? I don't. I've never even been on a horse. So. Oh, okay. My we're man. safe. We're safe. Okay, how can we help? You're, you're, you're okay. Well, a um, little bit of a backstory, then I'll get to my question. Um, in February of last year, um, I quit my job delivering for Domino's to be a full-time caregiver for my mom, who's just come back from a nursing home. She's been oh, wow. most of 2020 in the hospital mm. with sepsis, kidney dialysis, breast mm. cancer, a lot. Mm. Um, I, I'm an only child, and I grew up in poverty almost my entire life. So I felt like it was just my duty because I'm all she had. The nursing home would have taken all of her Social Security. Well, it, yeah, it financially ruined me because <laughs> I wasn't working. I was just doing side gigs, you know, maybe when I had to. But in she was doing good. But in, in December, just a few days after Christmas, I lost her to a heart to heart failure. Oh, just and I'm sorry. So, it was a shock to us all because she was doing so good. We mm-hmm. all of us. But um, I'm living in the manufactured home that she bought, and it's, it's an old. It's, just to show how old this house is, it's older than your than Dave's radio show. <laughs> Whoa! This thing was built in 1989, and the value is only looks about three thousand. I'm only paying about four hundred dollars a month with a lot rent and, and the fees they charge. But honestly, I'm trying to think. It's a wreck. The floor need, the floor needs to be fixed. The plumbing still hasn't recovered since the last winter storm. And the, the, the estimate I got was going to be over 5000 Now, I'm able to keep my expenses low because this is a, such a cheap place to live, but it's just not that good. And I'm sorry, Mom, it's the, the, we just could never fix the house. Mm. Now, um, I'm thinking about moving out, maybe just get a, a small one-bedroom apartment, but it's going to cost about $300 more per month, between two and 300 depending on what kind of place I get. I'm just saying, and right now, I, I, I call myself a baby step two. I just... Got the big set too. Actually, I had to use part of my emergency fund last week. But is it worth it if you're if you're still trying to pay down debt? Don't big step too. Is it worth it to move to a better place when you, in the place you're in? It's just I'm trying to say it's crap. So yeah. you're saying rent is going to be seven hundred a month if you move between six and seven hundred. That for okay. for one bedroom, one bath. When I'm looking around town, and yeah, how much? And how much are you making a year, Justin? Right now. Um, after mom passed, I got a job as the AGM of our local Chuck E. Cheese. I love it here. It's, I'm making about 35 a year. So it, when I figure out the math, depending on how much overtime I get, it will it, it will be less than a third of my income, which I've heard is the threshold yeah. it should be for a monthly rent. And how much debt do you have? Oh, boy. <laughs> um, I calculated around 55. Okay. okay. What, what kind of debt is it? It's about 48k in student loan debt, which a lot of it I met, I should never have taken. I'm the first, I, I own up to that, and a lot of it is some old um, medical debt. That's about 8,000 of it, and the rest is some charged off credit cards. One of which I just got to paying off. I, I was able oh. to negotiate with. I was able to negotiate with a collection agency that had it. I mean, but he was a bit of a smart aleck. Like he said, "I said, you know, I'm trying to get debt free. I'm trying to learn what Dave Ramsey says. Man, give me a break. This is America. Everybody has debt." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that guy sounds like him. Sounds just like he works for a credit card company. Could you so. negotiate the medical bills? <clears throat> um, a lot of them are too high. I think the largest one is six thousand, and the lowest one is two thousand. They're too now, high to negotiate. Uh, uh, well, most of them don't want to go less than a thousand. 
Well, have you asked for, hey, what would you take in full to settle this thing today? And the last one I talked to, I think the debt was, that medical debt was about 1200 They said the lowest I'll go is 700 Okay. I, I'd I pay for it in cash and be done with it. So that's my plan of attack. Okay. I'm going to go after that medical debt because it can be negotiated and have the cash to pay it and get it in writing to clean that up Justin, at, at a better rate. How many hours do you work? About 50. About 50. Uh, okay. I, I get a full... I get a full 40 plus a lot of overtime, especially the summer coming up. We're going to be busy. Yeah. So I know I'm going to get probably even more hours. (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Okay. Well, first and foremost, I'm so sorry about your mom Mm. Um, and especially being an only child and being with her for such a significant period of time there at the end of her life as her caregiver, I think is really, um, that's an amazing gift that you gave her. Um, And I really applaud you for that because that was a, a big choice. I know you had to make. Um, so that's and I was big. So happy whenever I got this, I'm sorry. I was, I was so happy when I got this job. I think it was just my mom telling the district manager, "Look, Aww. he took care of me for ten months. His job is done. Sweet. Get him this job. He's going to do well." Yeah. I think that was like mom's last, last gift to me, in a way. Absolutely. And then the second thing, Justin, I would say too is that there's a. You said you you grew up in poverty. Um, and so there's a mindset there that you're breaking, right? The cycle of saying, I don't have to live like this. I can really start to build wealth and it's going to take time. So if I were you, I would be working hard at your job, take as much overtime as possible, even bump it up to 60, 65 hours a week, 70 hours a week, go crazy, attack that medical debt, start paying off those student loans. And Justin, I think you are on your way and renting an apartment for 700 a month is very reasonable. And I would do that. I'll do whatever it takes to get there, man. Thanks for the call. Great job, Justin. You're doing awesome. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz. We're taking your calls. 888-825-5225. John joins us up next in the Los Angeles area. John, welcome to the show. Hello. How are you guys? Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. What's going on? All right. Uh, so uh, I'm a recently graduated senior, and our class uh, just finished the uh, uh, the foundations and uh, uh, personal uh, finances. Oh, and, uh, awesome. Uh, awesome. Congrats. Thank your teacher yeah, for teaching our personal yeah, finance thank curriculum. You guys. Yeah, I just want to thank you guys so much because uh, we learned a lot and uh, I really appreciate it. That's, That's our awesome. pleasure. So what's going and, uh, on with you? How can we teach, help? Uh, all right. So uh, today's our, our last day of uh, class and we just wanted to call in uh, with a question. Um, I am, a, you know, I'm getting ready for college and I have a, a bit of money saved up. I think I have about a semester's worth and um I was just wondering, uh, how would investing while in college work, you know, if, if I should do any investing at all? Mm, good question. So you said you have a semester's worth. How? What's the rest of your plan to get through college debt-free? Because that's your goal right now, to invest in yourself. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't quite understand you. Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. How do you plan on going through the rest of college debt-free? Um, so during the, this summer... Uh, before my freshman year, I'm going to work full-time and hopefully have about uh, the rest of the year, maybe a little more paid off. And then during the summer, I will work part-time. Okay, so you're going to do it all through you're working. Paying, paying your way through, basically. Yes. That's awesome, John. Very good. So listen, when it comes to investing in college, we actually say like it's not necessary, even though I know you guys watch the Blake and Jack um you know, we show the power of the, investing yeah, early. Of the compound interest. I know that's in the curriculum, which is awesome. And it's a good teaching point to show the power of compound interest. But really, the best investment you can make right now, John, uh, is in yourself and staying in school and paying your way through. And that's going to give you the best investment at the end of all of this is graduating debt-free. And then once you graduate, you're 21, 
I would press and you have no debt and maybe you even have extra savings. We've even talked to people like that yeah. that are very weird, but they do. Graduate with an emergency fund. Yes. And you and you graduate and you have cash saved or you get your first job and you save up that emergency fund. Then press play on investing. Then I would start investing. But I would go ahead and get three or four years of school. Um if you have any extra money saved that doesn't go to tuition, I would put it in a savings account for next semester. I would just continue uh, to build up a fund of cash um, to use for tuition or other things. And then when, again, when you graduate, maybe mm -hmm. you still have some more money in that account that you're able to use for your emergency fund or even to throw in and start investing because the, the amount of time you're going to, what you're not going to make up in those three to four years is worth it of not it being an investment, but it being towards paying off or continuing to pay for school. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's awesome. Is your all's class there? Are you like in class right now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is so That's cool. That's awesome. Hey class. Is your teacher there? Can I talk to them? Uh, yeah, you can talk to him. Oh, this Who is, is it? What's his name? What's his name? And over the phone room right now. His, his name is Justin Engelman. Justin, just do you call your teacher Justin? Wow, Mr. not Mister. Mister Inkleman, I think, is the proper That's way. The L A way. They're just like cool. They just go by first name basis. Mister Inkleman. Yes, ma'am. Hey. hey, welcome to the show. We just wanted to say thank you so much for teaching our curriculum in your class and helping this next generation get a handle on money. You're amazing. We've had a great year this year. We've invested a little bit as students and teaching them and how to save and. You know, one of our goals is to get them through college debt free. So, John, that's thank amazing. You, thank you, guys. I love to hear that. So fun, and it's your last day of school, huh? Yes, ma'am. We're at Lancaster Baptist School in Lancaster, California, and since we got on the show, the students don't have to take their final. Oh! Yes. <laughs> you can hear them sh shouting in the background. Oh, that is so funny. I just that channeled my inner high schooler. I did too. I'm so excited. Them. Now like, I feel, I Rachel, we're like cool now. I got to skip we a helped final. high schoolers skip a final. Y'all are welcome. Now go to school debt free. <laughs> I love that. Well, thanks so much for the call, guys. It's so cool. That is so fun. Favorite call of the day, right for there. For sure. Oh, that man. is awesome. For That's... those of you that don't know, we have a personal finance curriculum called Foundation in Personal Finance. We have an entire team here, the Ramsey Education Team, whose entire day is spent getting this curriculum in schools, helping equip teachers to teach this course. And Rachel, I've been getting so many messages because it's the end of the school year uh, from students saying like, thank you so much. We love the curriculum. It was inspiring. It was awesome. We're planning on going to school debt free. And it warms my heart. I'm like, there's hope for the next generation. Oh, man. And what a gift to be able to have this knowledge at such a young age because the decisions you make between 19 and 22 follow you, even though not all 18 year olds realize that. They follow you for your life. And when it comes to your money, I'm like, man, to be able to avoid so much and just say no and choose a different path, how much quicker you win with money by just doing that. And now that they have that knowledge, they get to put it into practice, right? Yes. And there's this concept. I didn't invent it. I don't know. But it's, it's pre-deciding. These students are uh, pre-deciding today the kind of life they're going to live. They're deciding the kind of person they're going to be. And they're deciding, I'm not going to be the kind of person who has shackles when I leave college because I thought 150 grand was just monopoly money that I was yeah. going to pay off because I'm going to make 150 grand the year I graduate high school, right, college. Right. That's the mentality a lot of students have. And so what I love about this curriculum is we go, hey, the culture is lying to you, but there's hope. There's a better way. If you can learn to say no, to avoid the comparisons, to go to a reasonable school you can afford in cash, to buy a used car in cash, your life is going to be so much better off for the next 50 years. Yes. Oh, so much easier. And it's that kind of line in the sand that you have to draw. And it's an extreme line to say, I'm going to not, I'm going to live without debt. Yeah. To say that is extreme these days. Well, even the kids going home to their parents and the parents are like, what? You learned that credit scores are stupid? Yeah. What are they teaching you in school? <laughs> I know. I know. Totally. But I love it. But it's that, but, but having that line drawn so early in life, because I kind of feel like that was my story, right? Growing up with Big Dave. Yeah. You know, teaching us. It was never like a, th it was never a thought for me to even do it because in my head I'm like, well, no, I'm just going to work and I have money in my bank like account. That's off the table. So yeah. And it wasn't this extreme thing in my head because it was so normal in our family. Uh, but deciding it that to your point, so early big decisions like that, it makes other decisions easier because when you take that option off the table, 
then it causes you to think different and it causes you to say, okay, how am I going to choose something else? Because when it's this idea of, well, I just can't go to school because I have to, I have to take out loans. It's the only way I can go to school. I have to. That's so, the most dangerous so, yeah. three words. And when that's your mindset, right? And you say, then, then it is an option at that point and you allow yourself to go down that road. But if that's not even an option, then you say, okay, I have no money. How do I go to school? Do I choose a different school? My, my school selection is going to look different because I'm not taking out debt. Uh, the amount of hours I'm going to work, the amount of time I'm going to apply for scholarships and grants. Like it, get, you ha- it forces yourself, it forces yes. your mind to make different options when you draw a hard line in the sand and say, I'm not going to live with debt. And that's what these students oh, have yeah. done. And it's, a, it's an amazing thing. Well, and and it's hard. Four years later, they don't have to shake their fists at the government and say, someone forgive these loans. <laughs> it's so unfair. Instead, they go, oh, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have debt. It's not even. It's not even a thing. I get to live my. I get to invest. I get yes. to live my life. I can retire early. I have I options and There's freedom. Freedom, and that's what. Well, that's what winning with money is. It's not this end game just to pile up and hoard a bunch of money to feel good and to buy a bunch of stuff. Even though we're not mad at stuff, but that's not the end point. Because what wealth actually gives you? It's not just the dollar amount in your bank account. But it gives you freedom. It gives you options. It allows you to give. There's an overflow. There's a surplus in your life to sure change your family tree, but to help others, right? So yeah. it's this its this cycle. It's not just for you to sit there and hoard, but it gives you other things in life um, that you wouldn't be able to have if you were living paycheck to paycheck and had debt um, and continued in that mindset with no you, money in the bank. When you have that abundance, i this is a hot take. I think it makes you more selfless because you're able to focus on yes. other things around you, people who need help. Where, where you can give some money to help others. And so yeah, cause your brain I want people pa- to get out of debt for that reason alone. It's worth it. I love it. that. Because, yeah, when you are living paycheck to paycheck and you owe someone money and you're going to a job you hate to pay off this debt, you don't have the capacity to look up yeah. and look at others, really. I mean, there, I'm sure there's a time and place, but most of your energy is going to taking care of yourself because you're having to pay your bills. Oh, and so yeah. once you're free from that and you have margin again, it's it's an amazing and thing. And when you do that at 18, woo, mm-hmm. that's amazing. I'm so excited about this next generation. Hey, if you want to learn more about our curriculums that we have in schools all over, we just met with a senator in Florida who got financial literacy passed yes. as a mandate. I love to hear these stories. Check out RamseyEducation.com to see what that team is up to. We are big fans of teachers out there teaching this curriculum, helping those students. So thank you. This is The Ramsey Show. millionaire, what kind of job do you picture them having? Is it some kind of high-powered executive position like a VP or a CEO? Well, here's the thing. Only 15% of millionaires actually have jobs like that. The reality is that the top five careers for millionaires in America are engineer, accountant, teacher, manager, and attorney. That's just one of the surprising things our team found when we conducted the largest study of millionaires ever done. We talked to 10,000 millionaires to find out who they are and how they got there. Our study also made it clear that to become a millionaire, you've got to invest wisely. And a big part of that is getting good investing advice. So you need to work with an investing pro who can walk with you and teach you about the options that are right for you. And our team recommends trustworthy, vetted investing pros from all over the country. We call them smart investor pros. So if you want to get in touch with a SmartVestor Pro in your area, just go to RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor and start building wealth today. That's RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor. Linda joins us up next in Charlotte, North Carolina. Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you. Absolutely. How can we help? Um, I'm on Baby Step 7, and I am retired and I want to know with the market the way it is right now, what is the best way to invest 100000 to 150000 Um, I've talked with a smart pro, um, a smart investor pro, and um, they kind of want to assume all of my portfolio, which is um, a little over a million dollars, and they charge $10,000 a year to do that, about 1%, 1.25%. 
And I was just wondering um, what the smart way to invest in that would be. Yeah. Well, first of all, congrats. Baby step seven, you got a paid for house, you're retired. How's retirement going? Very good. Thank you. Good. Well, I can tell it's very relaxing when you have money. So this is a good problem to have. <laughs> yes. So you got you got about 100000 to invest, and you're wondering what the right way to do it. And you contacted a SmartVestor Pro, and what you're talking about is assets under management. So they charge a yearly fee yes. uh, in order to do okay. that, and 1% is kind of the industry standard. And you're saying, okay. hey, should I be giving the 10000 to the SmartVestor Pro, or is there something I should be doing on my own? Yes. Um, another investor that I have most of my portfolio with from years ago recommended getting a three-year bank CD that pays Ooh. three and a quarter, three and a half percent. No. How old are you, Linda? I know. I am sixty-seven. Sixty-seven. Okay. I at your age, I would not. No, I would not. I would not put this money in a CD. I. I mean. Okay. Still at your age. I agree. You are. I mean, you still. I mean. God willing, I'm like, you could still have 20 years left, Linda, right? 20, maybe even 30 right. years, even 30 years. Um, right. So that's still a significant, I mean, that's that's two, three decades that you possibly could still have. So um, that you could be in the market. So if I were you, um, I trust our Smart Vester pros. I mean, that we, we vet okay. them and we... We really do. They, they they do the Ramsey way. And if they don't, we have people call us, let us know. But but they really do what we teach. And I think because of your age, I think even if you just got in a mutual fund and still, even though it's kind of crazy right now because of the market, when you actually have money, mm-hmm. though, and you have, you're have set up so well, really the way to look at it is that things are on sale right now. You can actually yeah. be buying a whole lot more okay. because I think the, the market will recover. Uh, we believe in the American economy enough to know that it will recover um, out of this. And, and, and yeah, if I were you, I would, I would put money in the market. I'd put that hundred grand and, and unless there's something else that you're wanting to do with it, I don't know if even real estate, if you, you know, if there's yeah. something else you don't want to, you yeah. want to do, but at this point you may not even want to mess with anything and putting it and parking mm-hmm. it somewhere and even just living off that interest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you need this income, Linda? Okay. No, I don't. Okay. So this is like bonus fun money right now, but you just want to steward it well. It is. And it's okay. Um, I guess I have trouble trusting someone that I just met. Yeah. It's okay to basically follow all their suggestions. They're probably going to want to manage the whole portfolio, which means moving funds over to them. Well, they're going to do whatever you're comfortable with. So if, if any any you financial advisors, yeah, your your job is okay. to tell them what to do. Their job is to advise you on what the best options are, but they're not going to do anything for you. They're going to educate you on okay. what your best route is. And Linda, never, this is our advice, always, no matter your age and situation, never put your money in something you do not understand. So if they're throwing okay. terms out and you're thinking, oh God, I mean, I guess I, you don't just blindly trust them because they are a smart investor pro or they're an investment professional or whoever it is. You need to fully mm-hmm. understand and ask questions um, before you put your okay. money in, I want you to be completely comfortable with it. And again, they're not going to just tell you okay. what to do. They should advise you and even give you different options and different routes. And and the prayer is that they have a heart mm-hmm. of a teacher, that they're there to help you understand and okay. know what's going on. It's not going to be this or yeah, this experience of, oh gosh, here's all these terms. I have no idea and I feel intimidated. And so I'm going to just trust because George and Rachel said mm-hmm. to do it. I want you to feel comfortable. And then if you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. No, we just had one initial meeting, and it was um, just kind of like a preliminary. And um, I, I did feel very comfortable with him as soon as I met him. And uh, but then, like as the days are passing by, then I I just get cold feet sure. because I just met him. Well, it's scary. I mean, you guys have worked so hard to build yeah. this wealth, and you've done an amazing yeah, job. Exactly. And so you're you're wise Thank to go. You. Hey, I want to make sure like that to hold on to it. Yeah, whoever yeah. I work with, I trust. And so here's an, one thing on the fee, if this helps you, their job is to choose funds that outperform the market. And so if you look at the okay. average over the last 30 years, you know you're looking at 10, 11, 12 percent. And so to pay someone one percent to get me 11 percent okay. return, you're still doing real good. You're still making six okay. figures a year on that compound growth. And so I don't want the 1% okay. to scare you off from ever yeah. leaving this money in a CD or a savings account where it can't even keep up with inflation instead of still making right. 9, 10, 11% uh, you know, when the market's doing well. So I want to encourage you that the, don't let the fee scare you away. Do it when you feel right. ready, when you understand it. 
Okay. Thank you so much for the call, Linda. Way to go. Well, Baby Steps Millionaire right there. Yeah, amazing. Great right. work. Tony's Great work. in Sacramento. Tony, welcome to the show. Hi, how's it going? Great. How can we help? So, my dad left me a house, and um, mom's been kind of knowing about that. She wants to move in now. The, the tenants have been moved out, uh, so the place is empty, and I want to move in. And mom wants to tag along. Uh, however, she has a bit of a gambling and a drug addiction problem. Oh. Not too sure on what to do about something like that. Uh, it's been that way since I was a kid. I'm so, so sorry, I don't think Tony. anything's changed. Oh, I'm yeah, so things sorry. are rough. Wow. Oh, that's hard. Um, were your parents together? Were they divorced when he left you this home? Um, actually, no, my dad was about, uh, shoot, he was, uh, late seventies when he had me and mom was early, uh, forties, I do okay. believe. Okay. And so were they still so married? Big different. They were not married at all. They, oh, um, oh, at all. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So yeah. he left you this home and there were tenants in there. They've moved out. So now you're wanting to move in to the gift that your dad left you. And now your mom is wanting to come in. Is she, has she, yeah. um, has she been through programs? Has she has she tried to get clean before? No, I mean I'm sure she's tried on her own, but of course uh, that's a very difficult journey on her own self. Sure. Uh, she hasn't tried anything professional, which yeah. I would feel is completely beneficial for her. But um, many places that I've talked to, it takes her to kind of you know make the first step. Um, sure. I don't want to give her the resources. You know, bring the horse to water. Do of you? Course. Of course, yeah. Do you? Is there a part, do you, is the most, does the big part of you want her to move in because you feel like you want to help or you feel obligated and you dread it? Well, I kind of want to help her, but I feel like if she doesn't want to change herself, if she doesn't feel like there's anything wrong with the way she's doing things, uh, there might not be, it might be a fruitless endeavor. Yes. For yeah. Sure. I see this as a form of enabling because she's now going to have no payments, I'm guessing, if she lives there. And you're going to be kind of enabling this behavior. She's not going to get better. And so I think you need to set up some hard boundaries and have a hard conversation with her and go, Mom, I love you, but you got to get better. And I want to be a part of your life, but I can't under these And I want to help you on this journey, and I will help pay for treatment, but I need you to step yes. up mm. um, in order to do that. Such a hard situation. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Tony. This is The Ramsey Show. Love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from the Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to the Ramsey Show channel on YouTube. This is the Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. From Ramsey Network, this is The Ramsey Show, where we help you get control of your money, get ahead in your career, and get on the path to living well. I'm George Camel, your host, joined today by Rachel Cruz, best-selling author and host of The Rachel Cruz Show. We're taking your calls to give you the right next step with your money, your work, the housing market, cars, inflation, you name it. So give us a call, 888-825-5225. Anthony kicks off this hour in Huntsville, Alabama. Anthony, welcome to the show. How you doing, uh, Rachel and George? Can you hear me? Yes, you sound great. What's going on? Oh, thank you. Um, my wife and I are in Baby Step 2. We have a car lease. It's $413 a month, and there's 22 months left on it. Mm. And then our other debt remaining is uh, student loans. There are 12 individual uh, federal student loans that total about $45,000. And we're struggling on how to order this, uh, which ones to pay off first. We do have $6,000 that we can use to go get a car, and we just don't know if we should put it on the student loans or get this car thing sorted out. Do you know the early buyout amount on the car? 
Um, I've checked it several times, but not recently, so it, it always changes. I think it's somewhere around like 35. It's a Jeep Gladiator. So, mm. Mm. What's your income? Um, combined, we're at about 150000 Okay. There's some good news there. We got a nice shovel to clean this up. Yeah. And that's the total debt is the 45 um, yep, student loans everything. plus the car lease. Yep, 45 student loans and car lease. That's all of it. Well, do you like the car? Um, I don't. My wife loves it. Because <laughs> right now, I mean, as part of your financial world, um, it's not that big. Of, I, I'm okay with you keeping the car if you want to do the early buyout. Um, but you've got quite the mess here to clean up still with, you know, what, yeah. $80,000 in debt. Yeah. Because kind of the rule of thumb too, Anthony, is we don't want your car to be half of your annual income. So it's not getting close to that. But um, I mean, getting out of this lease. Yeah. Because if you get out of that, you have 6000 I'd go buy a you know, know. A, a cheap beater car, which in this market, 6000 gets you a beater car, unfortunately. Yeah. We saw a, a Toyota Prius for sale in 2006, and we'd be going from a truck to a Prius. But I'm kind of willing to do it. My wife doesn't know if we should lose the security of the lease, being you know, that it won't break down. And uh, we've come to, term, come to the terms that we're paying off these loans, even though everybody thinks the government's going to forgive them. We're, we're paying them off. Well, federal loan. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, right now you have the illusion of security. You don't have financial security. And the idea of your car is just constantly breaking down because you drive a used car is a, is a myth. I think a lot of people truthfully use it to justify why they need to keep yeah. their nice, new, shiny car. Um, and so that that's going to be the toughest part, honestly, is the conversation with your wife about getting rid of this car if you're not going to keep it. Yeah, I don't think we were planning on buying it uh, at the end anyways. Okay. We just it's yeah. a lot of money for it. She, she likes it a lot, and it is a nice car, but yep. we want to own our car, and we don't really need a $35,000 car, I don't think. Yes, yeah, so I think that's that's the feeling. That's it, and especially if it's not something that you were going to buy even at the end of the lease. I think letting it go now, I think you guys are going to breathe. It's going to hurt, and it's not going to be fun, but I think it's the wisest decision right now looking at the numbers for you guys, and then that way you can start attacking this debt. And you guys make a great income too, Anthony, so you're going to be on the other side of this really quickly. Okay. All right. Well, see, sometimes we just make it sound so simple, and I've been sweeping stewing over this for days. Yeah, for we, sure. we tend to do that. We try to overcomplicate things, and the truth is – the money plan that we uh, pitch here on the show is real simple, and it's real hard because it involves emotion, it involves behavior, sacrifice. it involves sacrifice, and saying no, delayed gratification, uh, all things. You know, it, it really harkens back to our childhood days, Rachel, uh, when we're kids, you know, and we just want the things we want. We want it now, and so we go do it, and we go, oh, that was a mistake. How do we get out of this? Yep. For sure. For so, sure. Well, thanks, Anthony. Thanks for the call. Yeah, appreciate that. Nick joins us in Denver, Colorado. Up next, Nick, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. What's going on? Um, so currently, uh, me and my wife, uh, we have a house here. And um, I guess just a quick rundown on it. We're on a 15-year loan. We're 1.75% uh, interest rate, and we pay seventeen forty a month for our mortgage. Um, we get a thousand dollars a month for a studio that we have on it. Nice. Um, so we bought the house in 2018. Of course, property values, uh, everything's doubled. Um, we bought the house for 275. We could probably sell it for 600,000. Awesome. Um, the, uh, so the other thing is that we have now is we currently have another house, uh, we do. We have a little baby starting our family, um, so we need to upgrade. Uh, need a bigger house. Uh, we have some family that has a house that they offered to us. Um, it's much bigger. Um, we can get it for a really good deal for what the current real estate market is. So they're going to sell it below market and, to you. Yes. Wow. They are. That's generous. Um, yeah. No, that's why it's a good opportunity. But How much we're is trying it? to figure out whether we should keep our house here. How much is the new house? Um, the new house is four fifty. 
is four fifty. And we have a hundred thousand down to put on it. That's your equity in the current home. No, that's what we have. Uh, Same. Uh, if you didn't sell the current house, you still have a hundred thousand in cash to put down. Yes. Okay. And if you did sell your current house, how much could you put down? Could you pay cash? Oh, you could sell for a six hundred pretty six hundred thousand. You said. Yeah. 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 So they so could pay could cash for away. it, and but they have a mortgage on it. So how much equity do you have in the current house? Oh, we have. Well, it's worth. Yeah, we can sell for six hundred thousand. We uh, owe two thirty on it. Oh, okay. Okay. Good question. George. So you net like three fifty. So what I'm saying though, you yeah. net three fifty off the sale of your house plus the hundred grand you have. Boom! You just paid cash for this house, and you don't have a payment anymore. Right. So if I'm in your shoes, that's what I'm doing. I do, I do not like the idea of you having two mortgages, even if you can make it work yeah. on paper. From a risk management level, having no payments is better than having two. Okay. Um, you know, one thing, uh, our goal with this, myself, I don't have a retirement because of my, uh, I guess, my career choice. <laughs> What's your career? Uh, we, um, I'm a hunting guide and uh, ranch hand and stuff like that. So Cool. Nice. Um, yeah, my husband's dream job. So, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I'm very lucky and fortunate. My wife's a nurse, so uh, we're we're pretty secure, which is nice. Um, we did, you know, kind of when we bought this house, we were looking at it as a retirement for me. Mm. Um, well, I don't like a home as a retirement plan because that's going to be real hard to create a, a meaningful income off of that. So my my principles still stand, Rachel. You can disagree here, but I'm going sell it, pay cash for the next one. Then you'll be able to stack up real fast. You can do investment property later with cash. You can actually start to save for retirement. That's what I would be doing. That feels a lot safer. That's financial peace. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave Ramsey and the growth of Ramsey Solutions at, quote, overnight success. On the surface, it makes for a much more exciting story, but we've seen enough stupid to know that overnight success is too short and shallow to produce anything with momentum and meaning. So if you want unstoppable momentum in all areas of your life, you have to focus and spend time in the trenches and invite God into your efforts. Then you will see amazing things happen. Now, creating momentum is hard. It isn't for everyone. Not everyone is ready for that next level of living. But if you are, we've got great news. Dave Ramsey has written a new quick read called The Momentum Theorem to give you our formula for unstoppable momentum. And the cool thing is The Momentum Theorem is not exclusive to just his story. It can be your story too. You can shift gears in any area of your life at any time. You can turn the dial in your business, leadership, marriage, parenting, health, finances, and faith. Now, this is a value we've lived out here at Ramsey Solutions for a long time. It's one of our core values, and this is how you get out of debt. This is how you create an amazing marriage. This is how you build an amazing business like Ramsey Solutions. So go check this out. It's like 43 pages. You can read it in one sitting, but it could change the trajectory of your life. So go get your copy of the Momentum Theorem for just $10 at RamseySolutions.com. It's a free call, 888-825-5225. I'm George Campbell, joined by Rachel Cruz today. And Nicole is up next. She's in Augusta, Maine. Uh, uh, Nicole, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you guys so much for taking my call. Absolutely. How can I help? So um, me and my husband just sold our house, and we were able to become debt-free and put um, 15000 Yeah, I know. So exciting. Awesome. Um, and put 15000 away for our emergency fund. Awesome. Um, and, yeah, now we have put $50,000 left. Um, we currently put 15% of my husband's paycheck into his TSP because he's in the military. I'm going to school, so I don't have um, any retirement funds started so we have fifty thousand dollars and we want to go on a vacation and we want to buy some new stuff for our new house 
but I also want to, um, you know, invest it and just looking for your guys' advice. Cool. So you, you sold the house, you catapulted through baby step two and three into baby step four, and you said you're in a new house now. Did you purchase a new home or are you renting? Um, actually, we are living with friends right now. He's getting restationed, so we are renting at um, his new station. Okay, cool. So you're renting. Yeah. You're saying you want to buy some stuff for the new place and you want to go on a vacation. What's your hesitation with doing that? Um, just I want to – I wanted to open up a Roth IRA, so I was curious, and I, we wanted to put some money into that and start like another – because we have the TSP, and we wanted to start like another um, – Thing for like retirement. Um, I just didn't know how much I should put in there and how much should I spend on vacation? Yeah, yeah it's all a great question. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, if I were you guys, yeah, the, I mean, you could take that 15% of the 50,000. Uh, if you wanted to look at it that way, you could do that um, and put around, you know, 7,000 into a Roth IRA this yeah, you year. Could you fully fund a Roth IRA. And then take the remainder, you know, a little bit of that. Go on a reasonable vacation. Yep. Um, How much stuff do you want to get for the new place? What are we talking? A few grand? Um, yeah, just a few grand. We really just need a dining room table. Um, we want a new bed and then maybe a new couch. But what our two focuses is a new dining room table and a new bed. Cool. Have you priced out what you guys would want in something like that? Because I can, um, furniture just can range, so I didn't know if you had an yeah. idea. Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, so I'm, I would say a dining room table. I'm fine keeping under like a thousand or fifteen hundred, and then a bed. We haven't really priced out that much. Um, we haven't looked too much, but I would say maybe between like uh, three thousand or four thousand for like a really nice bed. Yep. Yeah, well, the great thing is y'all y'all have the ability to be able to do a lot with this fifty thousand. So I think yeah, I think go ahead and get get the furniture you want. Spend five six thousand on that. What's your income? Take a- uh, my husband's income because I'm a full time nursing student right now. Um, his income is probably about seventy seventy five thousand a year. Cool. Well, you guys have made the sacrifices to get to where you are. So I'm totally good with you making some purchases and enjoying some of this money. But just balance that with the opportunity cost of, okay, if we want to buy a home down the road, well, that's our down payment money that we're eating away from, which is okay. We, we got to go on vacations. We have to have a bed and a dining table. But we don't need to go crazy and go, we're going to buy the nicest of everything while we rent. And then you move into the new house and you go, well, the dining table doesn't fit in that spot anymore. And now we yes, don't need okay. it. Okay. You know, and so I just the, want you to think about the long term as well. Yeah. Do you guys move okay. a lot because of his job? Is he stationed? Do you guys? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We, we move. Yeah. We'll be in his new station for three years and we plan to rent for the three good, years. Good. And, yeah. and um, yeah, we have no idea what the what's going to happen in the future. We'd like to build a house and we decide to get somewhere. Yeah. So that's kind of an end goal. Um, but so you guys would just recommend putting about five, six thousand and opening up a Roth IRA. Yes, I would. Yeah. yeah. And going forward, you know, just invest 15% of your household income. So if you're still in school, that's 15% of his 75 into the TSP. And beyond that, okay. you know, you can start saving and up for that the next Roth house. And into the Roth IRA as well. And into the Roth. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, Nicole, you have you have the ability with this 50000 to be able, you guys can buy some furniture, take a trip. You're okay. So just take a breath. You have permission to do it. You can do it. Absolutely. Thanks for the call. Ashley, and thanks for your husband's service, oh, too, absolutely. by the way. Yes, thank him for mm-hmm. his service. That's incredible. Ashley joins us up next in Kansas City. Ashley, welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say really quick, I love Rachel. I love your Instagram reels. Oh, thank you. I love your weekly you. Q&A, so I really appreciate it. Thanks, Ashley. That's awesome. But uh, I have a question. So um, me and my husband, we've kind of been Dave-ish because – you know, he was at least, you know, willing to start paying off the debt with me and we didn't have too much. So we only had 15000 But his main sticking point was um, that we had to keep our retirement at 15 percent. Um, so but now I feel like that's slowing us down when we're in baby step three because mm. um, we're done with baby step two. But we're Yay. right at the end of baby step three. Um, so we'll have our fully funded emergency fund of 12000 um, next month. Awesome. Nice. But, but I feel like it's going to slow us down now um, to save for our down payment on our house. Ooh. So I was just wondering if you guys had 
to save that twenty percent. Um, so we want to save around thirty to forty thousand. And at the um, current to put pace, down on our house. Yeah, that's awesome. It's going to take us about three years to do that. Okay. If we keep doing the fifteen percent, and it'll probably maybe take us two. I mean, if we kind of really get after it, maybe. Uh, you know, a little less than two years if we... Um, and that's if you continue investing we, at 15%. Yeah, if we continue investing at 15%, it's going to take more around three years. Okay. But, um, and so you're then saving we a year if we pause kids. investing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How how urgent are you guys in, in buying something in the next two years? Well, we have a two-bedroom house and we have three kids. So, I mean, uh. it's really cramped. Yeah, um, the urgency so. is high. The urgency is high, actually. So, I mean, for me, it's high, um, but, you know. Um, How you old know, are you, He too? feels like we're not going to have – he feels like we're we're only going to have, like, one million um, if 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 we stop saving. And, and and he thinks we need more, like, three to five million because of inflation. We're 30 and 31. Wow. Um, you guys got another 30 years of your career. You're telling me you're only gonna have a million dollars after Ask, investing for thirty more know. years. He's always the he's always the warrior. So <laughs> well, uh, there it yeah, is. I'm trying to make him come yeah. see. <laughs> so Ashley, number one, amazing job. You guys have killed it, and I mean it's just it's phenomenal the progress you guys have made. So obviously you're doing something right. I know you're you're funding your retirement when you know I get all that, but you're making the progress. You guys are doing it. So. What it sounds like for him is he needs facts. So for you to say, gosh, I just feel like we're going to be okay. For him, he has numbers. So I would run, Ashley, some scenarios with an investing calculator. You can just go to RamseySolutions.com. We have them there. And run and say, hey, if we pause retirement for 18 months to save up for a down payment, here's where we're going to be at 65. And then remember, your income is going to go up, Ashley. You're not going to stay stagnant for 30 years. You guys are going to be making more money as you get great at your career. So factor that in and run some fun scenarios. Give them one, two, three scenario and show them yeah. you guys are going to be okay. You're going to be okay. But I appreciate his worry, but he needs some facts and logic. Good points, Rachel. This is The Ramsey Show. to the Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, host of the Fine Print and Entree Leadership Podcast, joined today by Rachel Cruz, host of the Rachel Cruz Show. You can find all of those shows on the Ramsey Network or wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. Olivia joins us next. She's in Houston, Texas. Olivia, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. How can Rachel and I help? All right. My question is, um, we recently, me and my husband, opened up a the company, and he stopped working. I do part time. Our question is, how do we tide off of our off of our business profit? Like we, it's a first business, we are so used to tithing every paycheck, and now it's a little bit confusing for us. It means how do we go about tithing from our business? Yeah, I mean it's a it's a great question, Olivia, and I love your heart in it. And I always say with this kind of these kind of questions that there's I don't like having like a major legalistic approach to it. So I think you can never uh, go wrong with being overly generous. So if you skew the yeah. way of going overly generous, I don't think you can go wrong there at all. Uh, and then I would say on the other end, I I would still feel comfortable that whatever your take home pay is, that's what you guys. Uh, tithe on or for people that make a salary if it's the net you know or um, however they look at it but I don't know if it's necessary to tithe on the profits of the business I would just do what your taxable your, income is yeah what your take-home pay is from the business well at the moment my husband's not really um, getting paid yet and why is that so, well but well, we don't know how to go about it yet. So <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, there is money there. The company is making money, but, um, but he's not paying himself. Mm, that's correct. 
Hmm. Is this y'all's business together? Yes. Okay, so where's the money going? What's there? It's there at the bank, I guess. It's there. I mean, since I'm, I am working, but I mean, he, he, honestly, he's been saying, I need to start getting paid. I need to get, start getting paid, but I. Is he I is he working in the business though? That is correct. He is working. Okay. In the, that's what he's doing full time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So he should. But he's not paying himself. But he should pay himself. He should pay himself <laughs> for the work. How are you guys paying your bills? Uh, well, I do have a part time as well. So that's how we're doing. We we are. I mean, we our only bills is our light, our water, and I guess our gas for a car and insurance. Okay. What kind of job? So, what kind of business is this? Uh, this is a field technician. He does a calibrations for the water plants. Okay. And and do yes. you guys have any debt? No. No. And you oh you don't have a mortgage? No. Dang, okay. That's so great. So how um Yeah. So your part time income is what's paying all the bills and then the business income is just going to the bank and just sitting there in an account. It's going to the bank and of course paying I guess the 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 business expenses side. Correct. Okay. Well you've got to start drawing something on this business it's got to create an income for it to be worth your time do you so, guys have investments okay. and stuff olivia like are you guys have retirement set up and all of that not yet okay not yet i just want to, i'm just trying to get a picture of where you guys are financially so you have zero debt no mortgage do you have cash saved in the bank for an emergency fund we do yes, okay we do. so you have that all covered uh but you do not have any retirement no ma'am okay how old are you two we are, I am 36. He's 37. Okay. Okay. So and we still got time here. Do you guys have employees? Like, is this a big business? Just one. Just one. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, if I were you guys, I'd run market rate on what he would be worth out in the marketplace. And you guys mm -hmm. look and say, hey, this is what you're worth. And let's pay this. Okay. But but then maybe you do say to Olivia, like, hey, we have no bills. We have no debts. And we're just like basically living off our essentials. So we don't, we may not need, I'm just making up a number here, but say it's a hundred grand. And you're like, mm -hmm. we all may not need that to live off of. Maybe y'all are comfortable with 70, him taking home 70. So that's 30 extra that you can look at and say, hey, maybe we invest extra um, to maybe, you know, in an extra mutual fund. Maybe we take some of that and enjoy life and go on a trip or if you need to upgrade a car. Um, so it's not a requirement that you guys take out what market rate is, but I would at least run those numbers just to know, <laughs> hey, here's how much it is. And if he, and, and, and you guys have that conversation because he may say, no, I work my butt off mm -hmm. and we could have a hundred grand that I make a year that's how I would feel mm -hmm. and I'd yeah. be like yeah pay me a hundred grand if I'm worth that or whatever whatever the yeah, if I'm putting the work in is. I want to feel the results of that yes and when yeah. it's just yeah, sitting well, in a bank he recently yes I guess this past month just started telling me exactly what you're saying yeah hey, I want to see my part too yes for sure for sure and then you guys as a couple decide hey here's what we're going to bring in Here's what we really need to live off of. And then all this other stuff we can maybe give generously. We can spend some. We can invest some. And, yeah, you guys get to decide. And that's the beauty about owning your own business is you kind of have this flexibility to kind of figure out, hey, what do we need um, in our family financially? What's it bringing in? What's what's being responsible and mature? You're not going to be obviously using your company as like a bank and making more than what you should. But yeah, running great. those numbers and kind of just getting an idea, I think, would be really smart. But great job, Olivia. You guys are You guys are doing awesome, though. Yeah. Great work. Question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Amanda in Wisconsin. While, we're, while you're rebuilding your emergency fund, would you recommend pausing your investments and only paying minimum towards your mortgage? I'm 28 and earn $48,000 net, and I'm on baby step six. I had to dip into my emergency fund for the first time to replace my furnace in a tune of $4,000. If I continue investing and pay off my home at my current rate, it will take me eight months to replace the $4,000 versus three months if I pause investing and paying extra on the mortgage. Aha. Interesting question. Yeah, I mean, it's an eight-month swing. So in my opinion, I think you're fine continuing it and letting it take eight, eight months. Eight months versus three. So there's five months that she's losing. Yeah, five months that you're losing. If it, if it was five way. years, I would say pause everything and restock. But if it's, if it's five months, I don't even know if I'd go yeah. through the 
through the work of pausing I mean, everything she, through your she's HR 28. department and all of that. She's I think, 28. She's yeah. got plenty of time to keep investing, so it's not going to break her retirement and if her ability pauses. to build wealth if she pauses. What I would say, split the difference, continue investing, but maybe pause the extra mortgage payments. There you go. Until it's built back up. And kind of dangle that as a carrot to go, I really want to get back to paying off that yeah. house early, so I want to hustle and get this emergency fund back and in place. And if all of her emergency fund was drained... I would yes. say I would pause Let's it all pause. just to get some cash in. But if it's $4,000 out of it. Yeah, we don't know what her full emergency fund is. But I, I'm assuming here that 4000 is not a fully funded emergency fund for any person. No, no. I would think she has more in there. So is it ter- am I lazy just to be like, I don't know if I want to go through the effort. I'm of not going to pa- answer the question. That, so. I'm not going to answer that, Rachel. This is a trap. I'm not going <laughs> to say if you're lazy or not. But no, I think either, there's no right or uh, wrong hard and fast rule here. I don't think there is. Yeah. Especially at 28. This is a, not a huge amount of money. But I and would, the time frame is I would not pause that the long. extra mortgage payments. That's there you my go. take. Okay. I like that, George. Keep investing, pause the mortgage payments, and use that to fuel you to get this thing built back up so you can get – because I can tell she's, she wants to do this thing. I think – yeah. Amanda, either way, I think you're going to be okay. But I, I would – George, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with your answer. Ding, ding, ding. Remember <gasps> this moment, America. Continue retirement and I agreed investing, on something. but – yeah, pause the extra on the on the mortgage. Yeah. That's good, George. This is good stuff. Man, you should do this for a living. I'll think about it. <laughs> well, Rachel, I want to shout out before we go to break here that we had a monstrous, amazing viral Instagram reel that we posted about Chick-fil-A. So I want to encourage America to go check that out. We did, George. You can go to at Rachel Cruz on Instagram, at George Camel on Instagram. That's Camel with a K. If you and, need uh, some Chick-fil-A hacks. We had them. I mean, $2, Rachel, to get a sandwich. I'm just gonna this leave it there. This might be a new theme. Maybe it'll maybe it'll go into other, the 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 the, the pairing of George and Rachel. We'll maybe see. Who four knows? people will probably go check that check out that <laughs> reel. But there's some good money saving hacks there and some good banter back and forth. It's great as we tend to do. It's great. We gotta have a good time. Always, always, always. We'll be back soon. Give us a call triple eight eight two five five two two five. You are listening to the Ramsey Show. of the day, Proverbs 12, 3. No one can be established through wickedness, but the righteous cannot be uprooted. Stephen Covey said, there are three constants in life, chains, choice, and principles. I like that. Change, choice, and principles. Good change, stuff. Change, choice, and principles. Nailed it. That's good. That means change will always happen? Yeah, that's Constant. right. And Constant. choices will always happen, and principles will but always be But you always want to keep them consistent your principles thank you for unpacking this or do you this change? is very helpful to me these these quotes and stuff they always kind of get our, me our team pulls them and it's all i always no. learn something new a lot of depth it's great sean is joining us up next in phoenix arizona sean welcome to the show hey guys i just had a quick question to ask you guys and just wanted to get your input all right Absolutely. Hit um, us. yeah so my wife and i we own a condo and with the housing you know, market, how insane it is right now. Uh, we kind of have a situation where I want to sell so that we could pay off the rest of my wife's law school debt. Mm. Um, but ever since we've been living here, she really likes to keep it. Sorry, and we, we missed that. She have, wants to sell. So you want to no, sell it to pay off her debt. And what does she want? Right. She wants to keep it. Um, now we, we came to an agreement. If a, if a house keeps going up in, in, in equity to a certain point that she, she would want to sell it, Okay. How um, much so debt is this? Uh, Ninety thousand is left on her last loan. Ninety thousand. How much do you guys make a year? Uh, one hundred and sixty thousand household income. One hundred and sixty. And how much could you get for the condo? Uh, 
like what what what, what what's our end price after everything? Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, of what you owe on and everything. Net profit. What would you net? Um, around one hundred seventy thousand. One hundred seventy thousand. So, I mean, and the man. total debt you guys have is the ninety k of law school debt. Correct, just the ninety k left. I mean, I don't think you have to sell this. I don't think you do either. I think you guys can really live like you're back in college for a year or two and pay off this ninety and and keep the condo. Yeah, that, that's the other option is we could pay it off in about a, over just over a year if we just really pay off the go hard on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would do that. It's going to be hard, yeah. Sean, because I know kind of in a weird way, the easy thing would be like, sell it, make a big profit, write a check. There's nothing wrong with selling going... it and, you know, just getting out of debt tomorrow. But I also don't think it's a dire situation where I go, dude, you're on fire. You need to sell this thing. You guys have an amazing income. And we say if you can get out of debt in 18 to 24 months, then keep the condo, then keep the car. It's okay. So that's my okay. take. Uh, but I would say split the difference. If you're saying, I want to sell this to get out of debt faster, get creative and talk to your wife and go, hey, what could we do to make this process happen even faster than one year? Can you work overtime? What if I got this side hustle? What if we could cut these expenses and we got on a bare bones budget for a year, like Rachel said, in order to speed up this process and sacrifice for a shorter period of time? Yeah, because you guys, I mean, do you all like the condos? I mean, she obviously loves it because she don't want to sell it. So is it a place that you're like, no, we could be in here for another four or five years? Absolutely. We both like the condo. Um, the reason why we bought it, we bought it about two years ago before the huge jump in the housing market. Yeah. Um, was because we had a good down payment for it. And we bought it for two reasons. One, to lock in the rent prices because, you know, the mortgage doesn't go up, but rent prices do. And two, to eventually sell it and collect the equity. And then that, that way we could buy a different a different. Gotcha. Well, um, yeah. And so, so that's why I kind of want to sell because it's gone up so much in equity that with everything going on in the economy, I do think there's going to be – a, a slower turn in the housing market for a couple of years. And I just want to get debt well, free, keep saving money and take advantage of that. Yeah. Then Sean, what happens is you sell it and you got to go turn around and either buy something that's super expensive because it's the top of the market, or you're going to rent super expensive because the top mm -hmm. of the market. And so I know that it's, it feels like a good move to sell right now, but you're stuck in a corner at that point. And so I'm good with keeping this condo, paying off the debt. Yeah. And then over time, you can save up and upgrade if you want to and, later down the and, road. And the other, I mean, or the other option is too, Sean, if you guys weren't happy with the condo, that's why I asked, where he's like, no, we're wanting to upgrade soon. If that was in the near future, in the next 24 months, then you could then sell, pay off the debt, have 80 grand to put down uh, on a new place if you guys wanted to buy high. I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of, yeah, it's whatever you want to do, but. I would stay, if you guys want to stay put and you're comfortable staying put for the next couple of years. It'll continue to appreciate. So don't yeah. worry about this market right now. Houses will always go up in value over a long period of time. So great question. Thanks for though. the question, man. Chris is joining us up next in Miami, Florida. Chris, welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going, guys? Great. What's up with you? Right. So essentially, I, I'd like to figure out a way to get moved out of my family's place and move into my own spot and also uh, get my girlfriend to move in with me as well, pretty much. Okay. How long have you guys been dating? Coming up on a year in about a week. Like nice. Three days, actually. Chris, yeah. why, don't you, why don't you propose? Um, I'm still a full-time student and I'm still living with family, so... I don't feel like that's the smart decision as of right now. It so why are you wanting like to move right. out? Well, so it's it's kind of it's a little bit more complicated. So she we live uh we're doing kind of a long distance relationship. I live in Miami, she lives with my family in New York. Um and she lives with your she, family? My family, yeah. With other with family in New York. Like oh, okay. Okay. Right. Gotcha. Um and she's uh just graduated with her associates and she's doing uh, a year of working because she's not like on a full, I guess she's not a U.S. citizen. So she's working for a year so she can get some money. And um, after that, she's going to finish and do her bachelor's degree. But um, I'm down here in Miami living with some other family. And I just feel like it's time for me to get my own place. And uh, like, just, I, I don't feel like I'm being challenged enough. Like I feel mm -hmm. it's too easy yeah. Living with family and it, you know. How much do you make I, a year, I Chris? Um, so I'm still a full time student as well. Maybe about starting 2022, I've been making maybe five to six grand a month. 
Okay. You're saying next year you'll be making five, six grand a month? No, that's uh, as of this year, as of 2022, I've been making about five to six that's grand great. a month. That's great. Yeah. Wow. So okay. a, while doing school full time? While a full time student. How I'm is this possible? Midterm next week. Yeah. How are you doing that? I'm just curious. Uh, I work from home. I, my schedule is really, it, it works wonders with me. I'm a full time student online and I work from a sales job from home online. Awesome, Chris. Great job. Good for you, man. Yeah. I'm impressed. Um, and how are you? Are you? How old are you? Uh, 23. 23. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Um, yes. So yeah, Chris, I mean, I think kind of having your own dignity is what it's sounding like of like, I have the ability to do this. I mean, you make, you know, 70 grand. It's awesome. You're making a great. So yeah, I would, I mean, I'm totally comfortable with you, you know, creating a budget and saying, Hey, how much could I spend on rent? What's food going to look like? I mean, go ahead and list out and make a mock budget of what it would look like for you to live on your own. And I think that's a great idea. Um, and I think that'd be awesome to make that step. Uh, I'm not a fan of living together before you're married. Uh, so I would bring, you know, if she wants to come down and rent a place next to you or stay up in New York where you are, I mean, the long distance relationship is kind of tough. Um, right. I understand that. So, uh, I mean, if she wants to come down to Miami, I think that's awesome. But also I would be like, hey, if you're willing to move in with someone, I think it's time to be thinking I, about. Put a ring on it. I mean, I mean. The only thing that stopped it, we just, I'm, I'm not comfortable, comfortable in my, like, financially, like, I don't feel like I'm stable where I've reached where I wanted to, because I'm, again, I, I plan on going to law school, and I'm only just at my associates right now, so I see, like, a law, like, a long uh, progress between where I'm at now and then, and it just doesn't seem like, yeah, like a I, benefit to marry, I guess. Sure. I hear you. I would just say, yeah, and I'm not for, I'm not pushing you to get married. I would just say right. if it's, uh, you, pe mar people are married in law school all the time, so it's totally doable. Right. So you can, you can go that right. route. But again, I'm not pushing you to be like, you, you need to, you need to marry her, but I would make life decisions to set you up well for the future. And we've just seen time and time again, and studies show that the divorce rate goes up when you live together before you're married. I think there's a more money element. problems. Yeah, there's just an element there to can keep things separate. So I would continue to do that, Chris. And you're gonna be able to cash flow law school because you're making a great income. You're doing awesome, Chris. So yeah, great star, job. Man. Yeah, graduate college and live it on your own. It's impressive. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. My thanks to Rachel Cruz, my co-host, all the folks in the booth, Austin, Will, James, Andrew, you name it, they're there. And you, America, thank you so much for listening. Until next time, spend wisely, save intentionally, and give generously. Hey, it's Rachel Cruz, co-host on The Ramsey Show. If you want to do your debt-free scream live on the show, visit RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream. We'd love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. That's RamseySolutions.com slash debt-free scream.